We'd like to turn to Genesis. I don't know whether there, I know Peggy sometimes goes through the uh, McShane reading, reading plan. So if you do that, then you'll have been reading this passage this week on Tuesday. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And we'll read verse 4, verse four 5, and 6. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And we ask God to bless his word to us tonight. On Sunday night, I spoke from Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. Now, you may have a verse from God. You, God may have given you a verse personally for the year ahead, and that's thrilling if he has. But I believe with all my heart that the verse that I spoke on on Sunday evening at the gathering, verse Isaiah 43, 19, I believe that that is essentially God's word to the church for the year ahead. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Or can't you feel it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I've been living on that for a wee while, and since Sunday, I've been living on it even more, and it's been going through my mind and my heart all the time, and it's just exciting me all the time. And so imagine when I opened my, the Bible on Tuesday morning to do my personal, private devotions that I came across Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. They hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, I'm speaking about the King James Version. If you're reading the King James Version, you'll see what I'll show you. But that's the version that I was reading. And so if you are reading that, then the wording in verse 5 is incredible. But we'll get there in a moment. We're going to be thinking about that tonight, just for a little while. This is the first prayer meeting of 2024. And that in itself should excite us, that we're at the beginning of a year with this, in God's will, the year spreading out before us, and we've got this opportunity to pray tonight. The title of the message tonight is Before His Work is Seen. Before His Work is Seen. Verse 4 sets the scene for us. Moses had already given the account of creation in chapter 1. And he describes how the Word of God brought forth all the aspects of creation. The Word of God, Christ, bringing forth all the aspects of creation. We're told in John chapter 1 that that's the case in the opening verses, that he created everything. And we marvel that he's our saviour. But verse 4 of our chapter says that these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Genesis 2 is speaking about creation, about God's creation, about God creating. But it's not, a, it's not something extra that God did. It wasn't something else that God did. It is Moses giving us more detail than he gave us in the chapter 1 account. These verses give us insight that he didn't give earlier. Especially interesting for us tonight 
in the light of Genesis 1 and verse 11. God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit. And at the end of that passage, that those few verses, God said that it was good. God had said, let there be in the grass and the herbs and the trees spring forth. It would have been a, a sight to behold had we been able to be there to see this, to see the earth just bursting into life. And it kind of chimes with what we were thinking about on Sunday night in, in Isaiah 43, 19. Now it shall spring forth. Imagine being there at the creation and God says basically the same thing, spring forth and now it springs forth. What a sight to behold. This New life, this fresh life that hadn't been seen suddenly was coming through. That's wonderful. And we long for the new thing that God has promised. We long for that new thing to burst into life, to spring forth. It's what we want to see. We want to see it at the command of God. Because it's at the command of God it will come. Not at the ingenuity of any one of us in this church. Not through our creativity. It will come through the command of God. And, and we long to see it. But you see, that isn't really what excited me this week. When I was, it did. But that's not the thing that really grabbed my attention when I was reading these verses. If you look at verse 6. There went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground because it hadn't yet rained. A mist came up from the earth and watered the ground. The Bible speaks of us planting. The Bible speaks of us watering, but God gives the increase. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 and 7. And that again is beautiful. We marvel at that. That as we work, as we do our work, God will cause the growth. But look at verse 6. There went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. God doesn't need us to bring forth this new thing that he's promised. You see, the new life that sprung into being at this moment was watered by a, a mist that rose from the earth and watered the whole ground. Before there was a man to till the land, God doesn't need men or women. Hallelujah. We sometimes fall into the trap of thinking God needs us. God needs us to do this. God needs us to do that. God needs us to do nothing. God isn't sitting back thinking, I wonder how I'm going to do this. Because there's nobody working. That's not God. God causes the mist to rise from the earth and to come down and water the land. He does it. And you see that word that's translated mist 
It means to draw up drops. It means to draw up drops of water. It's only used here in this verse and in Job chapter 36 and verse 27, where it's translated as a vapor. And in that verse we read, For he makes small, drop, small the drops of water, they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof. So when Job's talking about rain there, he's not talking about the rain that's been out there for days and days and days. He's talking about this vapor that God's creating. These small droplets of water that God brings up and he lets settle, watering the ground. Unseen. An unseen supply. Hidden, hidden moisture that God causes to rise and, and make the earth fill the life. Not simply life, but this, this mist that settles back down upon that life makes it sweet and fresh and lush. Do you believe that's what we're heading into this year? This might just be the beginning year of many years. But we're heading into something brand new because God told us. And the fact that God told us gives us joy and excitement and hope and confidence. That not only will there be life coming, new, fresh things, but God is going to make them sweet and lush. Oh, I'm so thankful that we're all part of Zion Baptist Church tonight as we head into this new year. It's going to happen. This, the hidden supply beneath what we can see, God can see. And God's going to use it. Wonderful, supernatural watering. Oh Lord, may that happen. We all long for the Holy Spirit to move in our midst and to cause this freshness to happen. We long for the Holy Spirit to operate like this in the midst of this church. We long for the supernatural blessing from God. And it is our prayer, O oh Lord, may this supernatural moisture, may this supernatural refreshing mist be brought into this place and settle upon us. But that isn't what excited me this week. It did, but that's not the main thing. This is what excited me. Now you're all sitting there thinking, oh man, there must be something really, really amazing that he's, he's, he's even more excited about than the moment of creation, this new birth, of, of this new life, something that's more exciting even than God miraculously causing this life to live and, and, and flourish. But you look back at verse 4, in the second half of verse 4. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused rain, he'd sent moisture, this wonderful mist that came up. Look at the language of the King James Version. When did God create the plant and the herb of the field? When he said, let there be. Yes. But look at verse 5. Every plant of the field God created, and every created the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. Before it grew. My word, that excited the life out of me. I mean, we were just thinking on Sunday night about, behold, I'll do a new thing. Can't you feel it? 
It's going to spring up. See how confident God is in this? And we should be confident in this as well, because do you know why? It's already in the, it's already in the ground. <laughs> when did he create this? Before it was in the land. It's already created in God's mind, in God's heart, in God's economy, as they say. That thrills me. That really excites me as we look into a brand new year. Before. That's a brilliant word, that. Before. So we don't know what's coming. Other than the fact God told us that there's something new coming. We just might be stepping into the beginning of it, but there's something new coming. I'll tell you something else. Before. Before. Before God told us this, as a church on Sunday night, it was there. I don't know what growth is coming, spiritual, numerical, whatever. I don't know the growth that's coming. But whatever is coming, it's already there. We've had this theme, I just began to think about this the other day, and we've got this theme running through quite a few of the, of the, of quite a lot of the ministry over the last year. The preparation that God has, God has already prepared, God has already done. The blessings have already been dropped for us to walk into and gather. This is the same thing, but it's all connected to what he's been telling us at the, on Sunday night. It's all there. We have to walk into it. It's all there. It's been there before he told us. Aren't you excited about that? It's, it's thrilling. I hope there's people online tonight. I hope there's people in Zion tonight, on Zoom tonight, wishing that they had been here. But I pray that those same people will feel the power of the blessing of God. Because God's blessing tonight is to tell us, not only will I do a new thing, but it's just ready for the watering. Just ready for the watering. And the minute God begins to water that, the shoots are going to be seen. We need to be confident in our God, don't we? The power of God. The power of God was at work here before his work was seen. That's absolutely wonderful. Because I don't know what your life is like right now at this moment, at this very minute. I know we've got challenges, and I know that there are challenges represented here. And you might be looking at your, your life. Zion, we might be looking at the church and thinking, wow, wow. What does the future hold? But let me tell you this, brother or sister. The power of God is already at work in your life, even although you haven't yet seen his work. Church, the power of God is, is working, has been at work in Zion Baptist Church. For how long? When was the church founded? I don't know. I wasn't here when you had barren times, but I'm sure you've had barren times. Even in those times, the power of God was at work in this place. Although perhaps his work wasn't seen. But I'll tell you this. His work is going to be seen. It's going to spring forth. Can you feel it? I'm going to do a new thing, says God. You see, before we get saved, we knew nothing about the power of God that was at work in our lives. But Ephesians 1 and verse 3 tells us that 
before the foundation of the world, we were chosen in Christ. The power of God at work to bring about the harvest of our souls. How good is this? And this is the same God and the same power that's at work in this place right now. And it's going to bear fruit down the line this year. It's going to bear fruit. We just need to be faithful in our service, faithful to one another, faithful most importantly to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to make sure that we are doing what we are supposed to be doing, that we are the way we're meant to be, and that we go forward relying completely upon and looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will be led to a place where we see the work of God coming to fruition. The work that's up, it's happening just now, the power that's happening just now. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you, shall you not know it? I think the translation, can you feel it? Is far better. That thrills me too. Can you feel it? You know what I want to say when I read that scripture? Yes, I feel it. I don't know about you, but I couldn't get to sleep on Sunday night. It was going round and round and round and round in my mind. What we experienced next door. And all we experienced next door was a wee touch. I don't know how scared felt. When he heard us next door, the volume was unbelievable. We were gone. Oh, Lord, do that new thing. Bring that new thing in. Give us, the, give us the strength to hold on as we make our way into 2024. Give us the strength to hold on and see it. Folks, we're going to pray to this God tonight. This is the God we're, we're going to talk to. And what are we going to speak about? We're going to speak about what's coming, surely. That's going to be part of our prayer. We're going to be speaking to this great God who does great things. The mystery of God's beautiful promises and plans. That what he's going to show us has already been created before it grows. Oh, praise the Lord. Maybe be thrilled with that motivated to pray and to serve on. Heavenly Father, we are thrilled at the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. We are thrilled at your promise, O oh God, that through him you will do amazing things. Lord, this isn't some wishful thinking. This isn't some kind of uh, hoping in a, a vain sense. We believe this is what you're saying to us. Father, we believe it. And we look to you tonight and we ask you, Lord God, may the faith that you've given us grow and deepen and strengthen. That we can hold on. That we can hold on in confidence. Because we are going to see it spring forth. And we are going to feel it in power. Father, we thank you tonight that we feel the stirrings. We feel the, the excitement and the anticipation and the hope that you've given. We surrender ourselves completely to you. And we pray that we see what you've done. Not simply what you're doing or what you will do, that we will see what you've already done. In Jesus we pray. Amen.